The Make Noise Woggle Bug has three sections. The audio section, the control voltage section, and the clock section. In this final video, we'll be talking about the audio section. If you've ever been confused or frustrated by the audio outputs and written them off as always sounding the same or being completely uncontrollable, I have good news. There are many different timbres that can be coerced from the Woggle Bug with a little bit of finesse. And just so I don't bury the lead, if you're wondering if you can use the Woggle Bug as a quote standard oscillator, the answer is yes, as long as you aren't concerned about tracking one volt per active. In this video, I have three tips that should help you get a lot more out of this module. But before we dig into those, let's take a brief tour of the outputs. The audio section contains three outputs, the smooth or shark tooth output, the ring mod output in the center, and the Woggle audio output, not to be confused with the Woggle CV output. There are no inputs in the top section, but these outputs are closely coupled to other settings and inputs throughout the module. For example, the influence input is in the CV section, but it's going to be very important for controlling the bug. The Woggle control also has a part to play, which we'll see in a moment. Let's start with the smooth or shark fin output. Uh, if you've had the Woggle Bug and you've decided to try and do something with the audio, this is the output you've heard and said, well, what the heck am I going to do with this? Uh, we'll get to that. But to go across the top, we've got the smooth output, which uh, if you were to look at this on a scope, you have kind of this smooth saw um, shark fin looking thing, which is why they call it that in the manual. On the right, we have the Woggle output. Very similar output, but with a standard square wave sound instead of the uh, shark fin. Next is the ring mod or center output, which as the name suggests is the product of ring modulation between the smooth and the woggle output. It is also affected and by the influence input. So there is the center ring mod output. And now what I'm gonna do is I have an oscillator just below here. I'm gonna plug that, this is a sine wave into the influence jack. Now I'm going to change the frequency on that. Raise it up. So obviously this is pretty gnarly and these outputs get real hairy real fast. So that's going to take us to the first suggestion, which is the outputs of the Woggle Bug can be described as a little bright or harsh or damaging to the psyche. I like to run them through a low pass gate like the Optimix in order to tame some of the harshness. Uh, the first bit of movement on the module affects the high frequencies, but not the amplitude so much. And even just taking a little bit off the top like that really helps make these uh, a bit more palatable. And then by the time you start uh, using an envelope, You know, already we've got this nice random sequence. So this is a little bit more usable. Uh, a low pass gate really helps kind of um, bring that really harsh top of it off, especially from the uh, ring mod output. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can use a filter before or after your VCA. Uh, this is just my preferred method. Tip number two, subjugate it. If you recall my previous video on the control voltage section, I showed how the ego id control can be used to do one of two things. With a source plugged into the external jack, the ego id control is a crossfader between an external source and the internal noise source. With nothing plugged in, the ego id control compresses the range of the random values generated by the woggle bug. This time we're gonna monitor the smooth output, which I will bring through my taming Optimix. And once again, we're gonna start lowering the ego id control all the way down. The tone will droop and eventually settle at a fixed pitch. Now that we have a steady tone, we're going to take the output of the clock and run that into the sequencer, which I have just below. You'll see that in a second. And then we're gonna run the output of the sequencer to the influence jack. The influence jack can receive both DC signals or control voltage signals that we're going to be used to sequence the Woggle Bug, or it can also take AC signals in as we just showed, uh, which gives you the product of the ring modulation. So we'll come back to that in a second, but here's a sequence coming in. And it sounds a lot like what we had before. But rather than random values, now we have uh, the sequence 
coming from our sequencer. And note that it sounds like there's a lot of slew going on between the values. Next thing to do to settle things down is we're gonna take the woggle control, and you guessed it, we're gonna drop it down to zero. Now the response is happening much faster, even though there's some cool pitch shifts that happen with each step. So we can go to different outputs, and we've got a pretty good sequence going on here. The neat thing about the woggle bug is there seems to be a floor. You hear that tone here? Whatever this is, that's kind of the, the lowest it's going to go. So regardless of where your sequencer or pitch source is, that's gonna be the bottom. And it's gonna be consistent, which can really add a cool rhythmic aspect to what you're sending into it. So this is cool. You've got it as a sequenced oscillator and you know, it's not following pitch, but it's definitely more controlled than, you know, this. Tip number three is to self patch the module. And in my opinion, this is where things can get pretty interesting. We're gonna listen to the ring mod output again. And right now we're gonna let it do its thing. But recall that the influence input takes an AC signal, and before we used an external oscillator. Well, what if we took the woggle output and fed it back into itself? So I'm just gonna take the woggle output, put an influence input, and listen to the tone change. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's drop this down. What if we do it with the smooth output? All right. So we can get a different sound here if we feed it back into itself. All right, that's pretty cool, but let's take this one step further. Recall a moment ago that I said that the influence input is DC coupled. And we saw that it's DC coupled because we could play a sequence into it and then we saw that we could feed in an audio signal, which is the input for the ring modulation. So that means in theory, it should be able to take both. So let's get nuts. Let's take a stackable cable here. We're gonna take the audio output from the woggle into the influence. Then at the same time, we're gonna plug the sequence from our sequencer into the input. And I'm gonna to cut to a video I recorded the other night where I have some examples of this. And we're gonna hear some really cool uh, examples of the tones you can get with this type of setup. So in this first video, I've got a very similar setup. We're monitoring the ring mod output. And we're also bringing in the sequencer, which you can see on the bottom now. And here I'm going to drop the lava control and you can already hear the different tones we're getting. The bass when I go to the four note sequence there is pretty crazy. I definitely recommend listening to this on good headphones. Next, just for fun, I'm gonna take this uh, example, and then I plugged it into the Mimia phone for some crazy delay. And here you can really hear what sounds like, it almost sounds like a car plus strong kind of pluck, almost kind of like the Mr. On output, which I thought was pretty cool. And then just for fun, here's the same example through an obnoxiously long delay on the FX8, uh, which I also have in the rack. I think it's the gray hole uh, algorithm, but I can't really remember. So those are just a few of the things you can do with the woggle bug in order to get it more tameable and more usable in your patches. There's a lot of different tones in this module. And they do take a little bit of work to get out, but hopefully now that we've gone through all the sections, 
the clock section, the control voltage, and the audio portion, you've got a better feel for the module and can really tap into the different components to get the most out of it. I think it's a very rewarding uh, piece of gear because while there is some functionality that you can get to right away, it does really reward diving into it and really exploring it and trying to ring every last drop. So that's it for the Wogglebug series. Thanks everybody. There were some really nice comments in the videos and right about the time that this comes out, uh, there's going to be a thousand subscribers on the channel, which is definitely 999 more than I really expected. And that one is my own other YouTube account. So thanks everyone.